So do you feel like, uh, you know, you've kind of come full circle now because your, your stage spectaculars are becoming almost like an annual event oh, they now. Are spectacular. And they're getting bigger and yeah. bigger. And uh, I've got to say, your Enigma show was, was fantastic. The, uh... Thank you very much. In fact, it was only yesterday. I was thinking um, <laughs> while I was doing the signing, why are they playing such weird music in the background? I don't know if you were there. And I realised it was Enigma doing, it was Gregorian chants, but singing like heavy metal tracks. And it was very odd. But I worked it out on the way back. Sorry, carry on. Enigma, the group, doesn't matter. Yeah. So, um, have you got a new show coming out soon? Got new fantastic ideas that you want to spill for us? Uh, oh, goodness. Well, January I'm writing the next bunch of TV stuff. Uh, February through to June I'm touring again with the second leg of the Svengali tour. If you know that I've been touring with earlier this year. And I finished that in June, June, July, August, September. I'll be filming the stuff that we've written in January. And then... Uh, October, hopefully a little week or two off, and then off to um, Broadway. So I'm doing a doing a stage show out there. So that's yeah, that's next year. So there'll be the the TV should come out in around that kind of time, sort of October, November, the same time that the experiments came out this year. Uh, it must be tricky for you because obviously these programs, uh, these stage shows, do become television programs in their own right. Yeah. And once they've done that, you kind of can't use those illusions again. Oh no, but that's fine. That's why we don't. The shows don't get filmed and done until the two years of touring them is up. I, I mean, it's, it's a strange thing because it's unusual for any sort of, like a magic act, for want of a better word, to have to renew itself every couple of years. You kind of expect it with comics that you're not going to, unless, unless it's 80 years old. Um, you don't, you know, you, you'd expect to um, see a different show if you go and, go and see them tour again. Um, it was normally my kind of world, you just have one act, you do it for your whole life. So it's a bit, it's, um, on the one hand, it's, uh, you know, it's a real challenge, but it just, it's, just really good fun. It's the thing I enjoy probably most out of all the things that I do. So yes, um, once that once it's filmed, once the two years is up, it's done and dusted anyway. So it's kind of uh, it's sort of out there. The only thing that might be difficult is I might want to use some of that material in America. So I just that's I might have to yeah didn't think of that. Hmm. Never mind. I might have to stop doing that. So yeah. obviously uh, you know you are part of this sort of wide magic fraternity. Do you do you find that you sort of uh, riff and banter with other magicians and get ideas off them? I know you're good friends with with Teller from Penn and Teller. Yeah, we riff and banter, which seems he doesn't talk is <laughs> a bit one-sided. Um, uh, I don't have a lot. Of, I've got a few friends in the magic world, but not many. I mean, Teller, Teller is one. Uh, David Burglass is another who's a bit of a sort of um, a veteran of, of that world. If, if you, some of you may may know him, um, but I don't. I don't generally have magic friends when I when I think about it. Most of my friends sort of are, I don't know, actors I suppose, or uh, um, the people I work with I guess, which maybe have an interest in magic, but not necessarily magicians. So. Um, no, there's not a lot of kind of magic-y riff and banter. So you never thought about taking on some young apprentice and you know, training them up through the ranks? And... You're asking for a job? Is that well, what you're <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I do occasionally get asked that kind of thing, but uh, I, maybe when there's time for that kind of thing, that, that might be nice. But, uh, but no, it's funny. It's one of those things that it, I you know, always used to have to show people magic tricks. Always wanted to. I was, you know, that's a, uh, an important sort of geeky stage you go through as a magician. That you've always got stuff in your pocket. And you can't hold a normal conversation unless it's A, about you, or B, a way into a magic trick. And uh, I think, hopefully, I've grown out of that now. And, and with that has come a sort of a, a, a lessening of doing magic in real life. Um, and it's become something that is nice to hone for the stage, nice to hone for, for TV, but in real life it just starts to feel a bit disingenuous because you're constantly sort of, you know, pushing for an effect and that's a, that's a weird way of kind of really interacting with people. Well, we've got, we've got a few questions that were left at a reception. Yep. And uh, one of them was kind of, at what age did you realise you kind of had, had a gift for, for magic and illusion? And when did it sort of suddenly sort of take that leap forward for you? Um, I... I don't know if it is, really is even a gift. I, so at university I saw The Hypnotist. A um, year later I was doing hypnosis shows. A couple of years later I was starting to do magic. And then, uh, and then you just sort of learn. It just comes with it. I think you need... It's like all of those things, like uh, playing the piano. It's 10,000 hours of practice, isn't it? They've sort of worked this out. That if you put 10,000 hours into something, you will have a gift by the end of it. So a talented musician is talented because he's put in 10,000 hours. But to put in those 10,000 hours, you've got to have a certain disposition towards whatever slightly obsessive nature you'd have to have to put in that. So that's the nature side of it, but also the nurture side of it. You've got to have a good teacher or parents that suggest you're doing it in the first place and the right environment to set it up. So it's very, everything's nature and nurture and seems to come down to this, this magic number. Um, 
And I think with me, uh, it was very much at university and afterwards where I was just putting in a lot of this kind of uh, time and effort. But no, I wasn't really, I wasn't, wasn't really into it so much as a kid. Um, and then, uh, and then even with the TV, it just sort of once I did that, I just didn't do. I did less magic and conjuring, all that, and just focused on the one thing. So it's a constantly evolving process. Very difficult to say, but basically, yeah, university age. Another one here is saying, obviously, you know, the the kind of show you do is is very particular to you. It's a very unique style of performance. But it seems that uh, it says that kind of the more that you perform these kind of bigger and grander and more elaborate illusions, um, do people kind of look at you and talk to you differently? You know, do they?